These two boxes of Rallyman are jam-packed with possibilities, and it's my intention to highlight all of the interesting things you can do with them. This is Shakedown. Well hey there fellow Rallyman enthusiast. Any chance you've ever seen a toge race? If you ever want to rise above being a circuit racer, you should see one. You know, I'm quite the latecomer when it comes to having watched Initial D. It was... Secret weapon! My ultra mega late breaking style! different, but the street racing it presents is iconic and Rallyman is more than capable of bringing it to the table. While you could go about recreating this race format with the standard Rallyman rules, the simplest set of rules are those found in the Shift street racing variant from Racerick. In Shift, you push your luck against an opponent over 11 tiles with nothing more than your gear dice. You don't have to worry about being in the right gear to overtake or how damaged your car is. You just roll at least three and at most six gear dice, plot them out as normal and race to the end of the stage. To make it even quicker, speed limits on the corners are a little modified too, so you'll be hurtling across the finish line in no time. The first player to cross the finish line wins the round and the first player to get two consecutive round wins is the champion. Simple as that. The shift rules say to randomly place a given set of 11 tiles onto the table, but with O'Daly's interpretation of the entire Akina Mountain Pass, we can instead try the rules out on the real route, just with checkpoints every 11 tiles, and race up and down the mountain until we have a winner. The rules were written before the drifts and jumps of Rallyman Dirt were a thing, however, so I'm hoping the new tiles won't cause too many problems. We'll treat those new track features as normal, which will mean that the leading car does have some incentive to stop on the corners to block movement, if they can engineer that. I suspect we'll see a fair few spins today, but with a very quick rule set, we won't be sat around waiting ages for our next turn if and when we do lose control. You can use whatever cars you'd like for this variant because we don't need dashboards. We've got the purple and blue GT5s today, and I'm directly controlling both, so I don't know which car is my car, so to speak. So I guess it's time to place your bets as to who will win now before we head to the top of the mountain for the first downhill run. Here we are at the top of the mountain, and to show you how quick these rules are, I'm just going to get straight into it. Now, you will note that if I were to have played my dice out like that in normal Rallyman, I would be breaking the speed limit in this space uh, because of the sharp corners, the dotted line changing the speed limit of the next space. However, we completely ignore sharp corners in uh, the shift rules. And in fact, what we can even do in shift is place gear die such that you can uh, go through a speed limit in one gear higher, and that will automatically change your die into a hazard. And of course, three hazards will count against your turn and cause you to lose control. So uh, with that in mind, the blue car is gonna kick things off and do something like this. Uh, they have to roll at least three dice and at most six. So their five dice are going to be an awful lot of hazards as they go one, two, three, and then lose control here in gear four. So they are going to go into gear zero. And that is all that they do as the purple car does much the same, only this time doesn't crash. Uh, they have two hazards, but they manage to go one, two, three, four, five, and put themselves here in fifth gear. So, uh, on the next turn, uh, turns alternate between players rather than where your track position is. So all the blue car does is recover, and the purple car is going to decide to slow down. Now, they're going to want to go, I think, five, four, three, two, and then one, to end on the inside of this hairpin. Now, again, uh, their speed limit is four, um, but you can place a gear five into a gear four speed limit and that would turn it into a hazard if it is not already a hazard from the roll. So here's hoping, in fact, it was the only hazard on the roll as they go five, four, three, two, one, and end in first gear as they intended. Uh, excellent stuff from the purple car. Can the blue car 
make up for its spin. It wants to go one, two, three, four, I think. And that will allow it a little bit of time to slow down. So four dice for it. No hazards this time. Puts them there in gear four. And the purple car uh, has a minimum of three dice to roll. And it's going to go one, two, three, I think, and make sure that it can slow down for the various corners coming up. I think he wants to be here in third gear. Uh, one, two, three gets it there. So they're sitting, waiting for the next hairpin. As the blue car needs to slow down as well, I think they're also going to go three, two, one. Of course, that's through a gear one speed limit. So they're getting at least one hazard and the dice roll one more, but not enough to crash this time. So they are here in first gear. And the purple car also needs to slow down. They're going to go three, two, one as well. Um, hazard on the two for going over the speed limit, uh, but that is the only hazard that they get. They are also in first gear. Now the blue car wants to um, get through the corner, of course, but that is a bit of a problem when you have no brakes and no coast die. So it has to roll the minimum. It has to roll one, two, and three. And that will put it right in front of the corner. Just the one hazard on gear three. Uh, not the best of places to find themselves in, I reckon. But we will see what the purple car can do as it tries to go, I think, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six on the drift would be impressive. Uh, of course, this is quite the risk, six dice. How many hazards? Uh, a fair few. So the gear one shows a hazard, the gear two shows a hazard. It's already a hazard, so it doesn't need to be turned into another hazard. So that's lucky if that happens uh, regarding speed limits. Uh, four, five, and six is a third hazard. So they do get as far as they want. However, they are backwards and in gear zero. So that was not how they wanted to end. But they are still in the lead. And the blue car does have a couple of tricky corners to navigate. It's going to want to be there in second gear, and there in third, and there in fourth. Um, it doesn't really want to be in fourth gear, so close to a gear one, gear two corner, but it has to roll at least three dice, and they have to be um, in ascending or descending order as per Rallyman rules. So two, three, four is all they can do. They're going to have to work out where they went wrong as the purple car turns around its gear marker. The blue car then is going to want to, I think, go uh, three, two, and then one. Keep things at a minimum in order to have a longer turn on the next turn. That is fine for them they go into first gear as the purple car wants to go one two uh three four before the corner that would be sensible uh two hazards not enough to lose control and they're in fourth gear the blue car is going think to try and match that one two three four they don't want to go up to fifth uh, because they won't have enough time to slow down so um, let's roll those dice no hazards whatsoever uh, one two three four puts them somewhere over there and the purple car is going to drop down to three and then two and then one. 
there will be a hazard on the three no matter what and that is fine because it rolled a hazard so it's not getting doubled or anything like that as they end in first gear on the outside of this hairpin now the uh, blue car is going to roll those same dice and come to a stop in the space behind the purple car in uh, first gear. It went down three, two, one. They're a little blocked, still potentially in with a chance of winning as we see what the purple car does. I think it's going to go one, two, uh, three, four. Doesn't want to go up to five with no breaks. So one, two, three, four it is. Uh, a hazard on the three and placing a two in a gear one corner will give it another hazard, but not enough to crash. So it ends there in fourth gear. And we see what the blue car can do. They're going to go, unfortunately, one, two, three and enter another drift around the next uh, hairpin. They don't crash, but they were close. So they're going here in gear three. The purple car is going to go three, two, one, um, or four, three, two, one. Yeah, let's try that. There is chance of victory. Four, three, two, one it is. Uh, no hazards except for overspeeding. So four is good. Three on a two would get a hazard. And then a two and a one to sit on the inside in first gear. I don't think the blue car can do anything to um, catch up. Uh, it's going to go two, three, four, and five and show you how to get around the corner. Two, three, four, five. But it's not good enough because the purple car is going to cross the line. Minimum three dice. Uh, one, two, three. And with two hazards, they get over the finish line to the first section of the Akina downhill. And they end with the first of two needed results. The blue car has uh, taken pole position again because it's uh, lost the last race. And in an effort to get out ahead as far as possible, it's going to roll five dice and immediately crash in the last space. So one, two, three, four, five, and a loss of control. Puts it there in gear zero, a good start if you want to lose. So with that in mind, the purple car is going to play things a little safer. Rolls two hazards for four movement. Puts them there in fourth gear. Uh, the blue car gets ready for the next turn. And the purple car is going to go, I think, four, three, two, and then one in order to get some distance away from the blue car. No hazards except for that gear three die in the gear two um, speed restricted corner. They are in first gear and the blue car has to go the long way around the outside of the hairpin. So not the best of starts at all for the blue car. They're going to go four, three, two, one, and get a couple of hazards, but not enough to lose control. They are here in first gear, watching the purple car speeding away. Now I think they want to get up to maybe fifth, fourth, third, second. That's fine. So. Um, five dice, bit of a risk, but it gets them as far away as they dare go. Only two hazards, nothing for the speed limits. So they are here in fifth gear. 
The blue car has a lot of catching up to do. I think they can do much the same. One, two, three, four, five. They don't want to go up to six, because that will be five, four, three, and too much speed results in a crash. So they want to end in fifth gear behind the purple car. They manage it on this occasion. No loss of control for them. As the purple car slows down for the hairpin, a three, two, and then a one in the long space. That's what they're gonna do. Careful of the gear two die. Turns into its second hazard for the turn. Not enough to lose control. They're there in first gear. The blue car is going to go um, five, four, three, two, one, and come beside the purple car, all being well. Need to be careful of the gear two die. It is their only hazard for the turn. And they come alongside very briefly before the purple car gets to speed away. Now they're going to go one, two, three, rolling the minimum and paying attention to the upcoming corners in this tight and twisty section. Uh, just the one hazard puts them here in gear three. The blue car is going to go one, two, three and aim to come alongside them, which they manage. But again, their turns are offset, which means they're gonna watch the purple car speed away. Uh, the purple car is going to go two, three, uh, four, and that's their turn, I think. Minimum three dice, of course. The four will be on a speed limit and is their only hazard for the turn. They end here in fourth gear. What can the blue car do? Now it can't overtake on that um, dirt corner. So they're going to go, I think, two, three, four, and sit and wait. Um, that's good. That's just the one hazard for being in gear three in a gear two corner. And they're learning from the purple car who is going to go four, three, two, and then I think one. Uh, that's their best course of action. Uh, hazard on the four and a hazard on the two when it gets placed in the gear one speed limit. That is fine. The purple car looks like it's on course for a win. Uh, as the blue car gets to do much the same, I think they're going to go four, three, two, one and stop on the corner. Um, a couple of hazards, not enough to lose control. They are here in first gear. The purple car is going to go one, two, three around the outside. Uh, it's not going to go up to fourth gear. That would be silly. Um, just the one hazard as they go into gear three. Now, the blue car is in a bit of a pickle. Um, it can go one and then two to avoid the on-track hazards, but then it would lose control in gear three. Uh, or it could take an on-track hazard there and then cut into the inside for um, an overspeed and then take another on-track hazard to come out here in third gear. Um, but it would take a hazard on the gear two and that would complete its set of three. So whatever it rolls, it's crashing. Um, and it might as well take one hazard, take two hazards, and then take three hazards there, putting it into gear zero and 
watching as the purple car drives forward with three, two, one of its own. Just the one hazard. And then um, the blue car gets to watch the purple car cross the line for a win as it goes one, two, three. Uh, two consecutive wins for the purple car means that the purple car is the champion of the Akina downhill. Maybe we should get the uphill course to the table and see if the blue car can get its revenge. As I said, the Rallyman rules are easily capable of a fully fleshed out depiction of the cat and mouse chases of Initial D, and even the duct tape death matches if you really want to prove who the best driver is. But what would those more detailed rules look like? Hopefully one of you will show us soon enough. However you end up getting Toge to your table, I hope you enjoy it and don't spill your water.